My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here. Uh, listen, did you ever, you served in the military, right? Yes, sir. Definitely. Thank you so much for your Were you a crazy man? You were jumping out of airplane. What were you doing, man? Crazy <laughs> stuff. I want to hear about that. Yeah, that's paratrooper life, man. Jumping out of airplanes, all that cool <laughs> stuff, man. You're crazy. You're <laughs> crazy. So how come you don't talk about that on your channel a lot more? I only saw one photo. I'm not like, did he did he do that crazy stuff? I'm like, I'm gonna ask him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I post like little throwbacks, man. You know, remind people because you know everybody kind of started following me with the music stuff. They wasn't following me, you know, in the military stuff. I didn't really have social media in the military just because of certain things and certain key places I was at. Didn't want um, off that information. Didn't want information to be out there. So yeah, definitely. Awesome, awesome. So, I mean, what kind of a mindset does it take? So here's my question. If you go to military yeah. and you start jumping out of airplanes, would that help you in business later on? It's it's mental fortitude, yeah. It's it's all about, you know, um, being fearless and, and, you know, persevering, achieving your goals. Like, my goal was to do that. You know, I accomplished it times 10, times 20 over. So uh, definitely um, it keeps you in a good goal. It to you know set out your goals and achieve them. So that, that I think it definitely helps. Yeah, because I mean I, I would I would worry about not staying alive to do the business down <laughs> the line. So <laughs> that would that, that's what I would be thinking. So how do you go from military to music, man? Give man. us this transition. <laughs> so this transition was crazy. Um, uh, as I was you know my times winding down in the military, I've always been involved with music. I uh, uh, used to own a nightclub. I used to do a lot of good, you know, stuff with entertainment, but never really focused on that because I was military. So once I knew for a fact that I was going to get out of the military, it's like, yeah, I'm going to definitely get into the entertainment business. And I uh, packed all my stuff up and moved out to L.A. Uh, I did the L.A. film school for four years. And that's where I got my degree in entertainment business and also uh, audio engineer. That is well, awesome. So, yeah, I know you're a 323 area code. That's it. So, okay, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. If you go back and, and, and you had to give some recommendation to somebody who's, let's say, 15, 18, 20 years old, and they don't have their shit together yet, but yeah. they're thinking that they want to go into that industry, what are some of the, what are some of the recommendations you could give? What are some of the hurdles that they have to go through? What are some of the obstacles that they're going to kind of I'll, face? Um, get ready to take a thousand no's. Like... <laughs> There's no um, there's no yes man in this industry, and then um also, you got to be ready to, like really study and understand your craft. Like you got to really study this stuff, understand see the trends, and see what's changing up all the time. So it's like, hold on, yeah, <coughs> sorry, bless you. Like freaking every time. I lost my train of thought. So every time you like, oh, here's my question. Every time when you, you say you have to you study your craft. Yeah. Are you talking about like reading, watching videos, or actually doing the shit? Doing it, uh, studying it, and actually applying yourself, applying everything that you learn too. Because that's what I feel like a lot of people are just, I don't know. So, okay, what does it take to, to be a master at that craft? How long would you say they have to study? Uh, my, my rule of thumb is 20,000 hours. I, I've done that times more over and over, not just on the, the production side, but like this. Actually reading blogs, like I'm subscribed to like so many different blogs like Billboard, Dot Biz, uh different key key figures and leaders in, uh in the team we work too that you want to follow and, and you know study their blogs. They always post it, they always constantly giving out a lot of information, a lot of good information too. And a lot of times just we as like not really like you know, as a fan, you're not really you really into it and you really want to cross over to the profession. It's a lot of free information out there in books, uh buying books, reading up on books. That's helped me a lot too. And then, like I said, once you're applying it, as you're taking it out, applying it because every, the industry changes so much, it, nothing's the same every day. Like uh, I promise you. So it's like different trends. Like TikTok came out, then that changed. So now you can make money doing TikTok, and you know everything just you know constantly changing. You got to keep up with it. I say keeping hip to. Like I say staying hip to the streets. Yeah, yeah. Love it, love it, love it. So here's my other question for you. How do you, 
my question is what type of a mindset do you need to have how do you how do you make your faith strong enough when where you're getting no's you keep going because a lot of people i feel like a lot of people might have that problem like how do how does that happen how how do you make that better i would just say uh surround yourself in a good circle good support like give support i say pick about four or five people that you want to support from and as long as they constantly encouraging you i think that helps me along like i have a lot of support you know coming from the military a lot of fan base from the military it's like oh man like thanks man like, i appreciate that hey man that's great you know just showing people that do stuff. a lot of times the military just i kind of say you think that's all we're gonna do it's milk get out and then that's why we have you know like a lot of struggle and stuff for that nature but like giving people hope like hey you can do it's more than life than military so it's more than life than just like you know, making music like i have to, i like to have fun i like to turn up and you know i'm a human being at the end of the day. I just don't look at it as like, oh, he just does music and that's it. Because it's, it's not like I like to have fun too. But like balancing that out to actually, you know, keeping that fan base and people, you know, encouraged that actually want to do what you want to do. Because I realized the effect that I have when people till they start hitting me up, like, man, like you haven't posted in like three days. What's going on? I'm like, oh, man, I was sick, man. I didn't know you were paying attention. You know, you never know. So, so like, here's my question As individuals in entertainment, you have the ears of a lot of the younger generation in yeah. our country and other places. What responsibilities do these leaders have or these individuals have in our community to what, what can we do to make our world better? Because I feel like as, as rappers, musicians, artists, singers, actors, actresses, these individuals, I think you guys, like personally, I, I don't know how I would handle that because the spotlight is on you guys all the time, right? And you gotta, you, got, you your words, your actions, and what you do shapes a lot of our younger generation. Yeah, I would say uh, just all trying to get on the same page. A lot of times, it's so competitive. Like I say, it's so competitive in the, in the entertainment. Everybody's not on the same shit in music, but there's a lot of stuff that we can combine together to make better for everybody else. I think that's where the disconnect is. We personally, music, our brand, we try to connect with everybody and try to help out. We do a lot of give backs, we do a lot of support for other events, other artists and stuff too. And like, we don't do like the drug, so we don't promote all of that. Uh, most of our music is clean, whole love, vibe music, uh, R&B music. So it's all on what you want to do as an uh, individual in this too. And also people that have the same mindset because we're not the only ones we have team I have the same, you know, agenda and stuff when it comes to this. Because some people like to do music. They like to do music. They don't care about, you know, the short-term money and doing shows. Fame. I'm in it for the long haul. My partner's in it for the long haul. Shout out Davis Chris. He's in it for the long haul. A lot of people that are in it for the long haul. So I think just teaming up with the right people would, like, you know, carry your brain too. No, totally. Listen, as a foreigner, I didn't know the whole history of, of, of music and rap. <laughs> And, and, and entertainment a lot. So my wife, it was like two months ago, there was this documentary, it was a series. I don't know if it was on Netflix or on Amazon, but it was like a lot of them about rappers, entertainment, songs, Tupac was in there, everybody was in there, and they all talked about, how, I mean, the whole documentary took us from like back in the days and just give us a clear timeline of how these artists became who they are. Yeah. And when I looked at it, one thing that just kept coming up constantly for me is that it was always a bunch of individuals with a lot of passion in a basement. They got together and everybody contributed to the group. It wasn't a solo. I rarely saw anybody make it when they just did solo. It was like them coming they together. Work. They work, yeah. That's the only way to make it. Like, that's how me and my partner wrote. Like, he do... We bring 200% to the table, so he gives 100%, I give 100%, that's 200%. So the more people you have involved, I think, in the artistry and then just putting out, you know, your stuff, the more people involved, the more successful you're going to be. And that's just with anything in life. You can't do anything. You can only go so far alone. And once you team up and you get, oh, I got a sponsor for my broadcast, and now, then, you know, you just open up a whole new network. It's just, like, simple things like that that helps you, you know, proceed better, you know what I'm saying, be better and great at your craft. Yeah, and totally. And this is what I saw. 
and, and I'm an outsider. I don't listen to rap as much as, you know, I'm not in the car as much, so I don't get that, you know? But then when I looked at it, I was like, this is exactly what people need to see, that when two or three minds come together, they yeah. create that mastermind that is more powerful than each individual is standing alone by itself. And that is most of the time the key element for those people to hit to the million, two million, ten million, get the gold record. I know they showed all that stuff. I don't know what it is, but how many CDs, how many records they sold. And I'm like, forget about all of that shit. Just focus on putting four or five people. They come together, not talking about the money. They're talking about putting good content out there. The word, if you do that, forget. you're about to become a millionaire. The, yeah. the, the consumer yeah. is going to pay you because you did that. Like I always tell people, chase the dream, not the money. The dream will bring the money. Like I think so far my success, the money has only come because of the little stuff that hadn't. I have. I wasn't chasing oh, this. I want to be known here. I want me to know I'm chasing. I just want to put out good music. I want people to buy my. As long as I focus on that, I feel like I've had more success and more money come away. People are like, hey, let's do the show. So, hey, can you do an interview? With Pull up to my city and get out. we're giving away. X, Y, Z. So it's like the money comes. Like, as long as I've been true and honest with like my brand and my craft, what we stand for. And like my daddy always told me, like, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. We stand on our brand. So our brand, you know, the money comes with the brand. Time. And that's when that's when it was so cool for me listening to the rap music that they were playing back in the old school. It was much, you could understand it a lot more uh, than, than what it is today. So I was listening to it and I was telling my wife, I was like, this is cool. Like, this, I like this stuff. And then she's like, yeah, didn't you grow up listening to this stuff? I was like, no, I went to school with a bunch of nerds. We <laughs> never listened to any of this stuff. We, we were just doing homeworks and, and extra projects. I didn't get any of this stuff. So now I'm sitting there almost 40 years old. I'm like, this is cool stuff. So it was it was a trip. Me, listen, I recommend that documentary. I don't know the name, man. Maybe I can find the name later on. But I yeah. think everybody needs to go through that documentary and kind of get educated on what it takes for musicians, artists, rappers, all of these people with their talent. They, they How do you put it out? All the struggles you got to go through. It was fascinating, man. They get right down to what they see on TV. They go, oh, it's money and girls and drugs. And it's just... No, nah, man. It was hard work. It was hard work. You got to put in the work. And I think a lot of artists, like, it'll be an artist today and it won't be an artist two months from now because they give up. They quit. I've seen it happen so many times. I've seen artists come out to move out to L.A., oh, I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to perfect my craft, and then life hit them in the throat because L.A. is a big city. It's about uh, 5 million people in this city, so you got to win the fans and hearts over. Everybody else has moved out of the same thing you're doing. What makes you unique? What separates you? And um, I think Seth Rogen talks about uh, the purple cow theory, where, you know, like, yeah, all these black and white cows, like, no one is tapping you on the shoulder going, hey, look at that black and white cow, but when you see that purple cow there in the past, you go, hey, 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 look, look, look. That's kind of how you have to be as an individual in the industry. It's like, what makes you stand out to where people want to chime in and tune in and support what you got going on? And that's kind of like the unique thing about us, military vets and transition. Me and my partner are both military vets. So transition from military life over to the music part, you know, that's unique. A lot of people are doing it. A lot of people did that. Now, listen, you put on some muscles, you know, from that time to this time. I saw the picture. You've been working out. <laughs> You've been working out. <laughs> Eating better and not, um, you know, in the military, you can only be a certain weight and height standard, you know, for your weight and height has to be a certain standard. So, like, you maintain that standard so you can stay in the military. It's like, work out. So I can eat what I want, work out what I want, lift the heavy weights. I'm running four or five miles a day no more. So, yeah, I'm, I'm living it. Yeah, I'm, man. I was so like, happy. damn. I feel like I'm more happier now out of the military than I was in the military because it's a lot of stressors. Uh, military life can be very stressful. Just trying oh, yeah. to stay within the perimeter. Also, you're constantly trying to, you know, please everyone. And, command, and then being a leader, too. Have so it's kind of like, now I'm free to do whatever. Even though I'm still keeping myself a leader. It's you got like, your freedom back. You got your freedom back. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time. And listen, oh, yeah. we got a full entire studio, not music studio. We have video studio. Okay. So whenever you're in town, we're in Woodland Hills, so whenever you want, you're more than welcome to yeah, come to the studio and yeah. just shoot some videos. I'm on there, Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. Just
the whole COVID nineteen. So that's the only reason we've been, you know, just separated. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, but, I mean, listen, we're doing the social distancing, but whenever you're in town, whenever you come on this side, shoot me a text. Let's get together. We'll do some videos because I'm fascinated how people. If we can take, if we can take those inspirations, somebody that goes from nobody to somebody, and yeah. we could video that content and put it out there. I think a lot of the younger generation will see that as inspiration, and they will try to do their best because now they got a role model in a good manner. You know, they have those role models, and they will strive to do a lot better. So I think we need to, as as individuals in business. And in entertainment, it doesn't matter what industry, we have the duty to be able to nurture the, the, the younger generation and prepare them because they're the future of our country. True. Today's future leaders are the youth. That's it. Right. Totally That's right. how it is. Listen, thank you so much for being here. How do people find you, brother? How do people uh, find you? Bill Shane Foster on IG or at DFB Music LLC on IG, either one of those two pages. That's how we rock out. Go Dave. At go partner page when production and stuff right songwriting so that's where we at with it listen that dfdmusic.com is our website to check us out there too upcoming project coming on friday r&b also older people like us and you know the middle age uh we got our project drops on friday called 50 50 go ahead and get your pre-save pre-downloads whatever you want to do right now, friday the 26th yes sir. love it listen stay in touch stay safe out there talk to you soon all right, appreciate you, man. You got it, brother. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.